Hello, my name is Fox and you're watching Den of Fools. Let's jump right in. The Cherokee opens up placing Cherokee USA from the 23rd to the 25th of February 2024. The tournament had 6 rounds with 246 players and 1,435 games played. The top 8 had a playoff to decide the winner, which is why they played more games. The 10th place tower player was disqualified for cheating, which is why they have been highlighted in red. Noah Nurendorfer won the tournament with their Thousand Sons. Joshua Campbell and their Necrons came second, with Daniel Reddenhash running Blood Angels in third. Big congratulations to all these players, and apologies for the poor pronunciation of their names. The first place Thousand Sons list takes a plethora of sorcerers. We see the demon Primarch of Zinch, Magnus the Red, who is of course the Warlord. He's a destructive force on the battlefield, as well as being a force multiplier. He gives all psychic attacks within 6 inches plus 1 to hit and wound, which include his own. He also has free buffs which you can choose one of at the start of the battle round. You can give one enemy unit within 24 inches hazardous on their ranged weapons. He can give all Thousand Sons units within 6 inches plus 2 inches to their movement. Or he can give himself minus 1 damage against non-psychic attacks. For me the minus 1 damage buff seems the go-to option. It partners quite well with his toughness 11, 2 plus save, 16 wounds and a 4 plus symbol, which makes him pretty hard to take down. His psychic attacks can dish out some serious damage, hitting on 2s at 24 inches. The Gaze of Magnus is 3d3 attacks at strength 9, AP2 and 3 damage. It also has devastating wounds. He also attacks with Zinch's Firestorm, making d6 plus 3 blast attacks at strength 5, AP1 and 2 damage. The plus 1 to wound he gets really helps him punch up against armor with his relatively low strength psychic attacks. The plus 1 to hit is useful if your enemy ever has a minus 1 to hit, such as stealth. For good measure, he is also a monster in melee, making 7 attacks at strength 16, AP3 and 3 damage with devastating wounds, or 14 attacks at strength 8, AP1 and 1 damage. As these are psychic attacks, he will get plus 1 to hit and wound in melee as well. It means he will also make full use of the detachment rule, getting either lethal hits, sustained hits 1 or devastating wounds. You can use some nice combos to give the weapons of other units psychic, and then turn off someone's armor save with the Twist of Fate ritual. When you include Magnus's buff and the detachment rule, if the enemy unit doesn't have an invulnerable save, they are going to have a very bad day. Next we see Araman without a disc of Zinch. He gives the unit his leading plus 1 to wound, which is useful if they are out of range of Magnus. His most powerful ability allows him to use a ritual for 0 cabal points once per battle. The aforementioned Twist of Fate costs 9 cabal points, so having the ability to use this for free once per battle is very nice indeed. He has a precision psychic attack which has a rather small chance of killing a lightly armoured character, and he hits reasonably hard in melee with 5 attacks at strength 7, AP 1 and damage 3. We see a single Infernal Master with the Arcane Vortex Enhancement. They give the unit they are leading sustained hits 1, and can change the result of one of their hit, wound or damage rolls to a 6 once per turn. Arcane Vortex gives the bearer's psychic weapons plus 1 strength and damage. Finally we have a tree of exalted sorcerers, with 2 of them taking an enhancement. All of them give their unit a 4 plus symbol to improve on the 5 or 6 plus most Thousand Suns units have. The on foot sorcerer has a rubric regeneration ability. You roll a d6, on a 1 your unit suffers d3 mortal wounds, but on a 2 to 5 the unit regenerates 1 model. If you roll a 6 you regenerate 2 models instead. The exalted sorcerer on disc of Zinch has a similar mechanic, however the effect is different. On a roll of a 1 you take the mortals, but on a 2 plus you half the movement characteristic of an enemy unit within 18 inches, a very useful ability to have. The Umbralific Crystal allows a unit to essentially go into Deep Strike in your command phase and come back in the movement phase once per game. This is very useful to have for a reasonably slow army. Finally, the Lord of Forbidden Lore Enhancement allows a unit to cast a ritual, even if it has been used by another Psyker that turn. The large number of characters will be leading the free squads of Rupert Marines with Warp Flamers. I would imagine the Unfought Sorcerer and Infernal Master led the Big Ten Man squads to make use of their abilities and enhancements, with the small Fireband squad being used as a bodyguard for Araman. Next we see two squads of Zangor. The Zangors move 6 with toughness 4, a 6 plus save, 1 wound and 6 plus invul. The Blaze make 2 attacks in melee, hitting on 4s at strength 5, AP1 and damage 1. For each objective you control with Zangors, at the end of your command phase you roll a d6 and gain a cabal point on a 4 plus. We have 2 Chaos Spawn for objectives and a Mutilith Vortex Beast. They have a versatile ranged attack with 3 profiles, a 2d6 flamer equivalent with strength 6, AP minus 1, and 1 damage for hordes. A d6 plus 3 blast attack with strength 9, AP 2, and 2 damage for elite infantry. And finally, a massive anti tank shot at strength 18, AP 4, damage d6 plus 6 with devastating wounds. It is a shame they are not psychic attacks, but they can handle any threat with such a diverse shooting profile. 
even this shooting is perhaps not what makes them auto include. They can double the range of a ritual used by a psyker within 6 inches, no matter how many are cast. This is incredibly useful to have, and because of it at least one force XP seems a must for Thousand Sun's list. It is not too surprising that the winning list look, looks similar to previous Thousand Sun lists we have covered, considering they didn't get any changes in the balance update. The second place Necron's list is the same that came third in our last tournament spotlight, as it is the same player who played in both tournaments. Congratulations again to Joshua Campbell on two great results in as many weeks. As we covered this list in our previous tournament spotlight, I will not go in depth on the rules, and I would recommend you check out that video if you are interested. I did want to highlight some of the best units for the Necrons, such as the Catan Shard. Every recent list I have looked at has featured at least one Catan Shard, with most taking two or three. The race with Technomancers to lead them are very strong in the Canoptic Court detachment, and are the main reason the Canoptic Court is taken in my opinion. The third place Blood Angels list does take the buff Sons of Sanguinius detachment. The new detachment gives you an additional attack and 2 plus strength on your melee weapons when you charge. This is a particularly nice buff for the Power Fist, which this list takes a lot of. They usually make 3 attacks at Strength 8, AP 2 and Damage 2, which does vary a little bit depending on who is wielding the weapon. On the charge, the detachment will give all the Power Fist Strength 10, which means they will be able to punch a fair bit of damage into armour. The army is led by a Jump Pack Captain, who does take a Power Fist alongside the Artisan of War Enhancement. This improves the AP of their Power Fist by 1, and gives the Captain a 2 plus save. That's not all, as the Captain itself improves the strength of the melee weapons when the unit charges. That would mean they would make 6 attacks with their Power Fist, which would hit at Strength 11, AP 3 and Damage 2 on the charge, which is pretty lethal. They also have the standard Captain ability to use a free battle tactic stratagem. I would imagine they led the big 10-man squad of Vanguard veterans. They move 12 with their jump packs as all jump pack space marines do. They have the standard marine profile of toughness 4, a 3 plus save and 2 wounds. The whole unit takes storm shields which gives the bearer a 4 plus symbol save, which makes them a lot harder to take down. They can only take the Vanguard weapons which make 4 attacks, hitting on freeze at strength 5, AP 1 and damage 1. Of course, with the extra strength from the detachment and the captain, this will go all the way to strength 8 on the charge, which will really help them wound a multitude of targets. To improve their ability to wound, when they charge, their weapons also get lethal hits. I like how the upgraded Blood Angels attachment has made the Vanguard veterans a much more tempting choice for the jump pack captain, and that is not all. There is a sanguinary priest with the jump pack, who can also join this unit. He has the standard marine profile and chips him some personal damage with his chainsword, However, his buffs are what make him good. He gives the unit he is leading a 5 plus feel no pain, and he gives them AP minus 1 on their melee attacks. This combines very nicely with the buffs from the unit already has to make a truly scary looking jump pack melee unit. For example, the captain themselves will be punched with a minus 4 AP power fist. Next, we have Lamartis himself. He gives minus 1 damage to the squad he is leading and gives their weapons lethal hits. He also hits reasonably hard, making 5 attacks with the Blood Crozius at Strength 6, AP 2 and Damage 2. He is the perfect leader for the big 10-man squad of Death Company with Power Fist and Inferno Pistols. The Marines have a 6 plus Feel No Pain like Lamartis does as well. They re-roll hits in melee, which will be very useful with the lethal hits from Lamartis. If they are not within 12 inch of a Chaplain, they cannot fall back and their OC is changed to 0. They can also re-roll charges, which makes them much more reliable. All of this will be buffed by the plus 2 strength from the charge, making this unit hit very hard in melee, and they will get there rather quickly with their high mobility. It is also a reasonably durable unit, with the 6 plus feel no pain and minus 1 damage. In nearly all Blood Angels lists I have seen in 10th, the Death Company led by Lamartes have been the most favoured choice from the Blood Angels' unique options. We see that almost all to include Lieutenant with combi weapon, who is very popular due to having low notive, which makes him great for objectives. Finally, we have a Tet Marine to repair and give plus one to hit to one of the Gladiator tanks. Speaking of which, the two Lancers move and have toughness 10, 12 wounds and a 3 plus save. Their Laser Destroyer makes two attacks, hitting on threes at strength 14, AP 4 and D6 plus 3 damage. This is a very fierce amount of tank weapon, and the Lancer's special rule allows it to reroll one hit, wound and damage roll when it attacks, making it especially potent. The tank also has some light infantry firepower from the Stubbers and Storm Bolters, with a bit of damage to shooting from the rocket pod. We also have the Reaper variant, which swaps the anti-tank for the close-range anti-infantry firepower of the Gatling Cannon. It makes 12 shots at 24 inches with devastating wounds and twin-linked, hitting on threes at strength 6 and damage 1. The Tempest Bolters also pump out a considerable amount of shooting, making 4 shots at the same range, 
with Rapid Fire 4, at Strength 4, AP 1 and Damage 1. If you can get the Reaper within 12 inches, it can really chew through infantry. This is helped even further by the Gatling getting sustained hits too when it is aiming at infantry units. Regardless of Nurse, we have two squads of Inceptors with the Plasmas. They have the standard Gravis profile, and each model makes two shots, hitting on threes at Strength 7, AP 2 and 2 damage on the standard profile. This is increased by 1 to the Strength, AP and damage when overcharged. They do have the Assault, Pistol and Twin Link rules, which makes them quite versatile. Their special rule allows them to land from Deep Strike, not within 3 inches of an enemy unit rather than 9, although they can't charge that turn. Regardless, it is quite a useful ability to have when it would be beneficial to land that close. Finally, we have two squads of Infiltrators, which are very useful units. They are seen in most top Space Marine lists. They can forward deploy and have a Deep Strike Denial of 12 inches, which makes them very useful for primary and secondary objectives. They also take the Helix Gauntlet to give the unit a 6 plus feel no pain. Overall, this Blood Angels list is a good example of what units are good for Codex Space Marines at the moment, as well as providing a showcase of the best jump pack melee available, which is considerably buffed by their upgraded detachment. Unsurprisingly, the Space Marines are the most played factor with 19.92%. Necrons are in second with 11.38%, followed by Custodes in third with 8.94%. It takes our resident stats guru and Ultramarine fanboy Fearless Fox many hours to collect all the data. It would be great if you could show your appreciation by liking and sharing the video. It really helps us with the god algorithm of YouTube. We have grouped the win rates by colour with the key at the bottom of the screen. The Eldari topped the win rates with their 9 players getting 68.6%. Imperial Knights also performed very well with a win rate of 62.5%. The Tower managed to get into blue with a win rate of 60.8%, however this does include the player who was later disqualified. When you remove their games and wins, they do still get an impressive 55.6% win rate. The Tolerant Runner-Up Necrons top the green group with a win rate of 56.9%. The Tyranids get a win rate of 53.3%, with the Custodies on a win rate of 53.1%. Chaos Demons get a win rate of 51.7%, with the Tolerant Winner Thousand Suns on a 51.3% win rate. The Gene Stealer Cults are the last faction in green with a 50% win rate. The Space Marines get a win rate of 47%, which does include the 3rd place Blood Angels list. The single Black Legion player gets a win rate of 50%, with the Emperor's Children player on 40%, and the Night Lord player getting a 16.7% win rate. The 3rd place finisher Blood Angels are leading the way for the Loyalists with a win rate of 54.5%. The Black Templars are close behind with a win rate of 52.4%, with the Salamanders on a win rate of 52.1%. The Space Wolves get a win rate of 45.8%, with the Dark Angels on 45.2%. The Death Watch run a win rate of 41.7%, with the Iron Hands and Ultramarines winning a third of their games. If you enjoyed our content, please subscribe, check out one of the videos on screen, and consider using our affiliate links in the description. Thank you for watching.